Welcome to episode 115 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm wrapping up season six of the podcast with a five-day challenge to help you say goodbye to teacher tired by doing fewer things better. Visit truthforteachers.com to get a transcript of this episode or to sign up for the challenge. So this episode has been kind of difficult for me to put together for you because it's the last one of the season. And that means it's the last message that you're going to hear from me for a couple of months. If you're new to the podcast, I take breaks twice a year so that I can focus on other projects. Each podcast episode takes me between 5 and 15 hours to produce, not to mention the time that my team puts into um, adjusting the audio and creating images and editing the blog post. It's a ton of work. So I like to batch that work and focus on that exclusively for a couple of months and then clear space in my schedule to focus on other things. So because I know that I won't be back with another podcast episode until late January, I want to make sure that I'm leaving you with a message that's really impactful. I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted you to think about as the holidays approach and the most important things for you to stay focused on. And I guess what I want you to know as you're listening to this is that your life is so, so valuable. It's short and it's precious. And whether you're doing it intentionally or not, you are leaving a legacy behind you. The impact that you're making every single day on the kids and the people in your community are shaping what our world will be like next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now, and even beyond that. So I want to challenge you to use the time before I'm back with another podcast episode in 2018 to really self-reflect. When you understand your true worth and value as a human being, when you recognize the potential for impact on this world as a result of the way that you live your life, the things that you've been confused about or stressed out about will begin to fade away and your biggest priorities will come into sharper focus. I want to challenge you to look for opportunities to just cut out the nonsense in your life. Cut out the stuff that you're doing just because you've always done it, just because everyone else does it, because it's familiar and comfortable, because you're worried about letting other people down if you don't do it. All these things that we just cram into our schedules and take on for reasons that really don't mean that much to us. And think about what do you really want your life to look like? When you look back on it all at the end, what do you want to feel like you accomplished? Will you regret the way that you spent your time? I know that many of us are just sort of going through the daily motions each day. We're settling for the status quo. And it's not because we don't care. It's because we're too tired to take a step back and try to figure out a better way. When you're drowning in daily responsibilities, it can feel nearly impossible to try to carve out time and mental bandwidth to think about your life's purpose or your legacy. And yet, getting clear on what matters to you could change everything about the way you use your time and where you focus your energy. So my challenge to you is to observe how you're spending your time, your energy, your money, all these resources. Observe that in these coming weeks and notice what brings you joy and satisfaction and fulfillment. Notice the things also that drain your energy and distract you from what you really care about and diminish your enthusiasm for work. Just notice and observe. Ask yourself questions that you don't normally get to ask, like, do I really enjoy doing this? Is this something that gives me energy or drains it? What made today feel worthwhile? What small moments and experiences do I want more of in my life? So spend some time noticing and observing so that in the new year, You can make more time for the things you love and start getting rid of the things that you don't. And this is really my heart behind creating the 40-hour teacher workweek club. You know, 40 is a number that sometimes people get hung up on, but it's just the number of hours that most teachers are contracted to work. It's never been about working a 40-hour week. The club is about questioning how you're using your time 
and being really intentional about it. It's about asking yourself, how much of my life am I spending on work? Is the time that I'm spending on work really benefiting kids? Or am I distracted and consumed by all the stuff that doesn't? How can I use my life both inside and outside of the classroom to make the biggest impact and get the greatest level of fulfillment? I've literally devoted the last three years of my life to building that and to supporting the teachers who join because of the sense of urgency about time. It's something that I've always felt passionate about and I just feel that passion getting stronger as time goes on and things in the world just seem like they're getting crazier. The world feels like a less stable place and nothing is promised. I don't want to see any teacher waste his or her life just going through the motions. Creating the life that you want to live is something that is done through small daily habits, just minor shifts in the way you think and the daily routines you have. And so if you can make even small changes in the way that you approach your work, your housework, your errands, you can get the less meaningful things either cleared off your plate or simplified so that you're spending less time and energy on them and freeing up more time for things that you really care about. So as I was working on this episode, I realized that I wanted to give you something a little bit more concrete to help you take this step back, even when you're busy, and prioritize and shift those daily habits to create more fulfillment and meaning. I tried to identify the most important things that I think you can do to stop feeling tired all the time and to really maximize your time and energy and focus. And the answer really was to do fewer things. And that way you can do the things that remain even better. So I brainstormed this list of the most important things that I think teachers need to understand about how to do fewer things better. And I was sort of surprised that there really were only five steps. We say that there's no tired like teacher tired, but it's really just five changes in your mindset and habits that can totally transform that. So I started writing everything out and I realized that these five things are actually simple enough that you could tackle one a day for five days. So what it evolved into over time, this is something I've been working on for weeks for you now. This is what the the final evolution of this is. I made a short three-page PDF for each step. And then I decided to add a printable form or some sort of template for each of those steps to help you brainstorm and help you figure out how to take action on the strategy in a way that makes sense for your life. And then I decided to go ahead and also make an audio version of the whole thing. So that way you can listen instead of read. So each audio message is like nine to 10 minutes long. So theoretically, you could listen for just 10 minutes a day for five days and see this clear path to reducing your workload. So I'm calling this challenge the goodbye teacher tired challenge. It's five days to doing fewer things better. This is a free challenge, you can take it at any time. And to kick things off, I'm gonna give you an overview of each of those five steps here in the podcast. And then if you find it interesting and relevant and you wanna take action on it, I'll remind you at the end how you can go to teachertiredchallenge.com and you can sign up to take it. So take a deep breath here because we are about to dive in. I know that five days may seem like a short amount of time to try to take action on everything that I'm about to share, but you'll notice as I give the overview here that most of this is simply a mindset shift. It's a reduction in things that you have to do, not more things added to your plate. It's basically the process of retraining your mind to focus on what really matters and giving yourself permission to let go of the things that don't. These five days are going to be an opportunity to make small changes to the way that you think about and approach your work and life. And those small changes can add up to big results. So the first day's challenge is to get real about how much you can accomplish each day and eliminate the unnecessary. If you want to do fewer things better, the first and most important step is to face the facts. You do not have enough time to do everything that you want and need to do. And there is no amount of rearranging your schedule that's going to change that. In order to stop being overwhelmed and tired all the time, you have to decide that certain things are just not going to get done and give yourself permission to stop doing them. 
Take charge of your own schedule. Don't disempower yourself by making excuses due to all the things that are outside of your control. You have to release yourself from the guilt that comes from writing 500 things on a list that you know would take you years to work completely through. All of that is just not happening. You have to accept the fact that if you're going to be, you have to accept that fact if you're going to be ruthless about eliminating things from your list and taking some of that pressure off of yourself. Ask yourself, if I were to look back a year from now at this list of obligations and demands on my time and things to do, which one of them would I say were actually worth doing? I'm willing to venture that at least a third of the things that you're trying to find time for don't actually need to be done. Or maybe they don't need to be done by you. Or they don't need to be done by you right now. Get rid of things that will feel totally inconsequential by this time next month or next year. Figure out the tasks that you're doing just because you've convinced yourself you have to and decide how you can relax the standards that you've set for yourself to a level where no one else will notice but you. Now, I know it's hard to figure out what to eliminate because everything seems urgent. Everything seems important. Everything seems mandatory. And when you sign up for the Goodbye Teacher Tired Challenge, I'm going to give you specific ideas and I'm going to teach you how to think through your day and find obligations to eliminate. There's even a template in there that will help you brainstorm. But for now, just keep in mind that optimal productivity depends on more than just time management. What you don't do is critically important. And most people aren't giving very much thought to that. They're just trying to cram in as many things as possible and shift around their schedule so they can do more. I'm advising you to do less. Say no to the things that are less important so that you have more time and energy for things that are your biggest priorities. Eliminate or delay anything that's unnecessary from your day so that you can release yourself from that weight of feeling like you're never really done and there's always something more you should be doing. So that leads us to the second part of the challenge. Day two's goal is to schedule your day to get the most important things done instead of doing as much as possible. So the idea here is to stop measuring success by whether you finished everything that you want to and instead have a focused list of priorities which you reevaluate throughout the day. When you do fewer things, that which remains will be done better. And the key to making this happen is a prioritized to-do list. You don't want this long list of 11 billion things that need to get done because then you're going to get overwhelmed and you'll just avoid the list altogether. When you start your day, you want to be crystal clear on what the most important, most impactful tasks are so that you can devote your best time and energy to them. If you're just working through a long list of things sequentially, some of those most important tasks may never get done, or they might be relegated to the end of the day when you're exhausted and you have nothing left to give. So you're going to figure out the main thing for each day and begin your day by focusing on that. Get that main thing, the most important thing done as soon as possible, and then tackle things that are less important or that require less concentration and energy. Now, here's the most important part to understand, and this is where a lot of people get tripped up. The purpose of a prioritized list is not to complete every task that you wrote down perfectly. The purpose is to make sure that you're focused on what's most important. And that's why the goal is not to get everything done on your list. You can't measure a day's success by whether you did everything you wanted to, because who really gets done everything that they wanted every day? We all have interruptions. We all have last minute demands on our time that derail us from our plans. And because we know that those interruptions are coming, we can plan for them. We can leave space for them. You don't have to do everything. You just have to do the most important things. So the goal is to use your list making system, whatever works for you, to help you constantly reevaluate priorities for the best and highest use of your time. And I'll provide a prioritized list through the challenge. And I'm encouraging you to just try it out for one day. Just, uh, just decide for one day what's the most important thing, write it down, and then check into that list throughout the day to make sure you're focused on that. 
So the challenge will help you change your mindset in this area. And that way you can give yourself permission to eliminate tasks when unexpected interruptions throw you off. So you'll learn how to move things around and tell yourself, well, I had an unexpected meeting and then my computer crashed and I lost 20 minutes of grading time. So that means I can't get everything done that I had planned. I can't just keep working through this list anyway and trying to cram three hours worth of work into two. What's on this list that could conceivably wait until tomorrow or wait until later in the week or maybe even be eliminated altogether? So in this way, you're creating your schedule around the most important things instead of just trying to do as many things as possible and whatever feels urgent in the moment. You're going to have a focused list of priorities, which you reevaluate throughout the day as other things crop up. And on the second day of the challenge, I'll show you how to do that. So here's the focus for day three. Minimize decision making by automating tasks and creating routines that simplify your life. One of the reasons that teachers feel so worn out is because of decision fatigue. Research has found that teachers make more minute by minute decisions than brain surgeons. And that's extremely tiring. Every choice you have to make throughout the day taxes your mind and reduces your ability to make good decisions later in the day. Also, self-control and willpower are limited resources. They get depleted as the day goes on. That's why we're often patient and highly disciplined and very accomplished earlier in the day. And by the end of the day, we're stuffing our faces with junk food and snapping no at anyone who dares to ask us a question. We've already expended all our self-control. By evening, that willpower that's needed to force yourself to clean up the house and prep for the next day, it's already been used up in the classroom. You're fatigued from having to make so many decisions all day long about how to meet the needs of so many kids that you simply can't do any more until you get rested and recharged. Sometimes it feels like hitting a wall where you literally cannot make one more decision and you just say, I'm dealing with all of this tomorrow. So that's what decision fatigue is. How do you prevent it? The solution is automating as many decisions and routines as possible. When you do the same things the same way each time, it requires less brain power, less willpower, and less energy. And that's why highly productive people like the late Steve Jobs wore basically the same outfit and ate basically the same breakfast every single morning. He didn't want to waste his brain power on making decisions about minor things like what to eat or what to wear. When you get to this third day of the Goodbye Teacher Tired Challenge, I'm going to help you think about ways that you could streamline your daily routines and reduce the amount of decisions that you have to make. So how could you maybe automate your morning routine with students or create habits at dismissal time that require fewer decisions from you? You'll have an opportunity to brainstorm some ways that you can change routines and habits in this area, and then you're going to pick just one to implement. Reducing decision-making through habits is a really simple change that can make a huge difference. And that's because your lifestyle is basically just a series of habits. The quality of your daily habits determines the quality of your life. So if you can take just a few minutes to consider some habits to create that will simplify your life, that will reduce your decision fatigue, that will maximize your time and energy and focus. So we'll do that on the third day of the challenge together. The fourth day's challenge is to maximize your energy and focus by batching tasks and building in buffer time. So far, we've talked about moving things off your plate by giving yourself permission to say no to what's less important and making peace with the fact that some things just aren't going to get done. We've also covered the importance of reevaluating priorities throughout the day and reducing the amount of decisions you have to make through more streamlined routines and habits. So all of these strategies will help you feel like you have fewer things to do. The fourth day's challenge is about looking at those tasks that remain and deciding how to do them better. It's about completing those top priorities and urgent or important tasks in the most effective, efficient way possible. Batching your tasks is one of the easiest strategies to implement here. So that's what I'm going to help you plan out on day four. You want to group similar tasks together and do them in one larger batch. 
So for example, instead of answering emails one by one as they pop up on your phone, turn off those notifications and read and answer everything all at once at a predetermined time of day. Instead of running one errand after school on a daily basis, batch them according to what part of town they're in and combine them into just two days a week, which become your errand days. You can batch meal prep, lesson planning, paper grading, cleaning, just about anything. Think about those little nagging tasks that make you feel overwhelmed. How could you combine them so that you're not feeling pulled in a million directions simultaneously? The idea is to do focused work in themed blocks of time because that's faster, easier, and more meaningful. That grouping similar tasks together really makes a difference. Now, here's the really amazing payoff that you get with batching. When you batch your tasks, you're able to get a little bit ahead instead of always feeling like you're just treading water and you're not really getting anywhere. anywhere. So let's say that you need to look up lesson ideas online. Instead of just looking up tomorrow's lesson, make a list of activities that you need for the entire week. Once you get good at this, you can map out the entire unit and you can explore those just in one sitting. That now puts you ahead so that you don't have to look for lesson ideas every evening and plan day by day anymore. That is an energizing feeling. When you feel accomplished and slightly ahead of the game, you're going to be more motivated to get things done. You'll no longer feel like you're constantly behind the eight ball and just slogging through the daily grind. What you're doing is you're investing time up front to batching tasks and getting ahead. And you'll know that the payoff is going to come later when you won't have so many little things hanging over your head. Batching just one small set of tasks is incredibly satisfying and therefore it's very energizing. Now check this out. What happens with that block of time that you would ordinarily be spending on lesson planning or running errands or meal prep, but you no longer have to because you've batched and you've gotten a little bit ahead? Well, now you've created margin in your life by giving yourself buffer time. You're not constantly running late and getting completely thrown off by a traffic jam or fire drill or some other unexpected interruption. You now have a few minutes to spare. That's going to reduce your stress level exponentially because over planning and over scheduling and feeling like you're behind creates anxiety. So I'll explain this all in more depth on the fourth day of the challenge. By that time, you'll be slowly practicing how to eliminate some things from your day and focusing on those top priorities, minimizing decisions, batching tasks to get ahead. These are the steps that work together to create margin in your life. They give you room to breathe. So the final step now of the Goodbye Teacher Tired Challenge is to prioritize rest as the catalyst for productivity and to schedule in time for things that you love. So this fifth day will help you create time in your schedule for rest and self-care and your biggest priorities in life. That's going to be possible as a result of your investment of time in learning the strategies that I shared previously. So it may seem out of the question for you now, but I'm telling you, small changes add up to big results. Each day of the challenge, you're going to lay the first simple foundational blocks. You're going to do just one thing each day. And if you do that, then by day five, you will have eliminated a couple of tasks from your to-do list. You'll have batched a few of the things that remain. And you'll have streamlined a habit or two so that you don't have to make so many decisions. I promise you at that point, you will see these small windows of time that can be used for rest and self-care. The critical piece to remember here with this fifth step is that you can't wait to make time for rest until after you've figured out a perfect system for simplifying every aspect of your life. Prioritizing rest is not the payoff for your other efforts in prioritizing. It's actually part of the prioritization work itself. Rest works in a reciprocal way with productivity. And so completing this fifth and final step is going to make it easier for you to continue doing the first four. And here's why. Rest is not the opposite of getting things done. It's the catalyst for getting things done. When you make time to rest and recharge, you're able to get more done the following day. Now, this is something that most of us understand intuitively. We believe it, and yet the choices we make don't reflect that. 
We say that we want and need just a few minutes of peace and quiet for ourselves during the day. And yet, if we have those few extra minutes to clear our heads or rest, we immediately look for something else that needs to be done so we can fill up that buffer time. If there isn't anything interesting or meaningful to do, so for example, if we're sitting in a doctor's office waiting for an appointment, we'll pull out our phones and actively look for work we can do, such as checking email or giving ourselves more information to process by scrolling through social media. This habit of filling every spare moment with mental stimulation and work causes us to wear ourselves out. Any small break that we're fortunate enough to have in the day becomes this opportunity to do a bunch of random stuff, tasks that were not on our list of priorities for the day. And those things keep us in that energy draining decision mode. We work ourselves until we're literally collapsing into bed at night from exhaustion, and then we wonder why we don't have any energy the next day. What if, instead of trying to fill every moment with more and constantly trying to stimulate our minds and be productive, What if instead of that, we lived as if we truly believe that rest will help us do more? What if we seize those small opportunities for self-care throughout the day? What if we got to the end of our rope in the evenings and we said, enough, I give myself permission to stop here for the day. I don't want to waste my last remaining bit of energy on things that weren't even that important to begin with. I need to be refreshed in the morning so that I can tackle my biggest priorities then. And I know that the only way to do that is by resting now. You see, while time is a very important resource, energy is an equally or even more important resource. And unlike time, energy does not automatically replenish itself. Each day that you're alive, you're given more time. You're given another 24 hours to utilize but you're not necessarily given more energy. And in fact, you don't wake up with more energy unless you've done something the day before or the night before to replenish it, unless you've taken care of your body and mind and allowed yourself time to truly recharge. Rest is the catalyst for productivity. It's not a break from it. And you can structure your life in a way that reflects that. You don't have to move to a desert island and quit your teaching job. Like everything else that I've shared with you, this aspect of conquering teacher tired is about habits and mindset. Your habits create your lifestyle. All you have to do is change some of your habits and you can feel more rested. And so on the fifth day of the challenge, I'm going to give you specific ideas and suggestions for doing exactly that and making time for rest from work. If you feel like you don't want to spend the rest of your teaching career in the same work habits and the same patterns that you have right now, please know you don't have to. There is a better way. And that that applies to extreme situations where you're just so stressed that you're having a physical reaction in your body, or maybe you've contemplated quitting your job. And it also applies to situations in which you actually feel like you're doing pretty well, but you just have this sense that something is missing. You're going through the daily grind and you're just not getting much satisfaction from it anymore. There's so many things that feel like a distraction from what you really care about and what's best for kids. And you feel like you don't have the time and energy and support to really make sure your lifestyle is aligned with what you believe is important. The Goodbye Teacher Tired Challenge will make a big impact on your stress level and your anxiety in either situation. And I can say that confidently because I've witnessed it in the lives of thousands of teachers. These are foundational principles behind everything I teach in the 40-Hour Teacher Work Week Club. I've helped teachers apply these principles to every aspect of their lives, from grading to lesson planning to technology to parent communication to setting up and managing a classroom. Anyone who has been through the club already or is a current member, I think you'll find that this challenge will really help you refocus on the main principles that you've learned in the club and help you maybe establish or reestablish some thinking patterns and habits that you may have let slide over time. So this is a challenge that I truly believe will be helpful for every single teacher, no matter what or where you teach, no matter if you've joined the club, if you've not join the club if you're not interested in the club at all. This is something that I think will make a big difference. So if you want to participate, you can go to teachertiredchallenge.com and sign up so that I can walk you through how to do fewer things better. 
Here's how it'll work. You'll get one email a day for five days. And that email will include a three page PDF plus a printable template that will help you sort of think through and brainstorm ideas around what you learn. Cause you're gonna be listening to this mindset and thinking about the action for now and then just picking one thing in your life to change. So the template will help you pick that one thing. There's also a 10 minute audio version so that you can listen instead of read if you want to. And that's all it takes. You're just gonna open the email and click on the link. And that will allow you to listen for 10 minutes a day for those five days. And you'll understand how to take action on everything that I've shared here. You can unsubscribe from the challenge at any time. And you can even sign back up again later if you want to take it more than once. I know that email management is a huge headache for a lot of you. So if you're worried about losing the messages and not being able to reference them later, when you sign up, I'm going to give you a link to a place online where you can log in and use the materials like a free online course if you would prefer to do it that way. So all the PDFs and audio will be on a single page in my Teacher Lifestyle Lab. That's a new site that I've created to share courses and mini courses that will help you experiment with different habits and create the life that you want to live. So you can access the whole challenge via email if you want, or by logging into my site, whichever one you want. Don't worry, you don't have to remember all of that now. Everything that you need to know is at teachertiredchallenge.com. So just go there and sign up with your email address. I'll send all the info to you immediately. The link is also in the show notes for this episode. So if you click the information button in your podcast player app, you should be able to click on a link right from there. My hope is that the Goodbye Teacher Tired Challenge, five days to doing fewer things better, will help you alleviate some of that stress from this crazy busy season that we have ahead and prepare you for a more peaceful and meaningful and restful year. This is your takeaway truth for the weeks ahead. You can create the life that you want to live as a teacher. No matter how many decisions are out of your control, If you take charge of the aspects that you can influence, I promise you will experience a major difference in your work-life balance and your happiness. The world needs teachers who can be present and focused with kids and truly energized for the hard work that is ahead of them. Your students deserve to have a teacher who's rested and inspired and balanced, and you deserve that for yourself. So I hope that these resources that I've shared today will help. I'll be back for season seven of Truth For Teachers in 2018. Until then, remember, you can do this. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Truth For Teachers is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. For more great podcast recommendations, go to edupodcastnetwork.com. That's E-D-U podcastnetwork.com.